All right, everyone. I want to talk about um, gravity and electricity because the electric universe community is not accepting uh, the model of what mainstream is telling us gravity is and how it works. That it is not a warping of space-time. In fact, um, what they say it is, is a manifestation of the electrical properties of matter. And so that it is essentially a, a force and a function um, of electricity at, at, at the foundational level. And, and mainstream will it tells us that our own moon is receding away from us at 1.6 inches per year and that never really made sense to me um, with the standard idea of gravity I would think that it would be getting closer to us um, but mainstream is also finding these um, filaments, as they call them, that are connecting galaxies. And so the electric universe talks about um, that, yeah, there is an electric network, a, a like a web that, that connects uh, the cosmos and, and, and these objects electrically sense each other and react to each other. And mainstream will tell you when these massive galaxies um, collide into each other and merge into each other, none of the stars actually collide with each other. There's no contact. And so that's because um, I would speculate that there's a, uh, a repulsion force. Um, you have positive and negative attraction and repulsion. You know, sure, asteroids will will come into uh, planets and stars and such, but I think once you have massive enough bodies that are uh, magnetized and electric, um, that that that's what the thunderbolts of the gods is. That's the repulsion uh, in action. And so. Let me get down to this recent article that came out. Um, these Harvard scholars, these petroglyph experts, talking about how the ancient Chinese must have been hanging out with the American Indians because of the similarities they're seeing in the petroglyphs in, in China and uh, America. And so, I won't bother reading the article to you, but this is the kind of stuff they're putting out. They show uh, these two images here from China and America, and I want to talk in detail about these images. Here's one of the experts. So, Anthony Peratt, world-renowned plasma scientist, had already recreated this image in a uh, classified setting at Los Alamos Laboratory, and when he saw that they were on rocks, it changed his life. And let's, So we want to know how does this formation compare with this one, and is there a relationship? And so let's see what Peratt has to say about that. The most essential issues concern the connectedness between seemingly different rock art themes. For example, was there a relationship between the Cayenta pictograph previously noted and the global stickman image, and why is the Cayenta form 
more sparsely recorded than the worldwide stickman image. There is a good reason for this according to Peratt. The Kayenta pictograph signifies a critical moment just prior to a collapse of that more complex form into the simpler stickman form. The synchrotron radiation preceding that transition would have been deadly, making it close to impossible for humans to record the form while standing in the open. So he's saying that this was the more deadly, um, as far as radiation formation, as it was transitioning into this, which I would speculate stuck around a lot longer than the other one did uh, globally in the sky. And as to uh, how deadly it was, that's anyone's guess. And so this is where this kind of stuff comes from because it was witnessed uh, and documented and I, I'm only going to show you a couple examples but there are thousands I mean it goes on and on and on and so I think these are the early depictions uh, personifications of this formation that was seen this is uh, probably later these coins and this was probably put on this rock by an actual eyewitness um, pay attention to this feather looking thing here because I want to go back to um, the Egyptian goddess Ma'at and her feather that's a major uh, archetype and voila same type of thing you know this uh, it's just what happens to plasma under high energy this discharge this torus um, the leading edges were the densest most visible portions and it's sometimes arms up sometimes arms down it's it's dancing and oscillating sometimes arms looped and so when you see this uh these these same circles here on this ancient menorah it's it's telling on itself here again telling on itself And this is the dancing discharge, the torus field, under the polar configuration. And we can overlay these images and, and get an idea of what this is. The, these are the planets on top of this uh, torus field dancing around. Saturn, Mars, and Venus the eye of God, Ra, not the devil, although it must have seemed like the devil during the cataclysm, as we are in our electric Birkeland current early solar system. Um, this is the uh, Peratt column, Anthony Peratt, the column that he is teaching us about. These very intense um, electric current lines of magnetism electricity and it explains the origins of, of these things 
on the left the Parat uh, laboratory experiments on the right all the different um, pictographs, petroglyphs that are documented by eyewitnesses this is where this type of thing comes from that's what it is maybe the Chinese were hanging out with the American Indians but the Harvard scholars are far from the truth maybe somebody someone could send them some links and teach them about the dancing Taurus field and it's interesting that it's called Taurus and as I've talked before about the bull of heaven the crescent of the polar configuration and the descending plasma mountain this was the bull of heaven and you know, even the constellation of the bull is called Taurus and, and then we have words like torque and uh, tornado and a lot of tor words all going back to Taurus So, the polar configuration over the Taurus field. Not aliens, not the devil, but it was the cataclysm, which also resulted in a flood. And whether that was massive... Um, tsunamis or incoming water from space or perhaps both we are still trying to determine that so thanks guys for watching hope you have a good night